If you've been looking into cybersecurity certifications, you've certainly come across the CISSP certification. What is the CISSP? Well, it stands for the Certified Information Systems Security Professional Certification, and it's issued by or an organization called ISC2. It's recognized globally as the gold standard for cybersecurity certifications. It covers eight domains in the ISC2 Common Body of Knowledge, also known as the CBK. A lot of people ask me, you know, is the CISSP worth it? After all, it's a pretty expensive exam and it takes uh, quite a while to study for it. It's absolutely worth it for those looking to advance in cybersecurity management or leadership roles. There's a lot of industry demand for the CISSP certification and it can give you a notable uh, salary increase. The CISSP is trusted by many Fortune 500 companies and particularly in government and defense sectors. Everyone says that the CISSP exam is hard, so how hard is it? Well, it is super tough and it's designed for industry professionals with at least five years of paid experience in IT security. The exam is an adaptive exam. By that, I mean that it becomes more difficult the better you do on the exam. In fact, it's not very well known that everyone who takes the CISSP exam will get approximately half of the questions right. The difference is, which half of the questions are you getting right? Are you, are you going up in difficulty to the harder questions or are you mostly staying in the super easy questions? Because the better you do, the harder that exam is going to get. And the worse that you do, the easier the exam is going to get. Most people who take the CISSP exam will mention to me on Reddit, man, this was a super difficult exam. I felt like I was put through the ringer the entire time. In fact, I felt completely unprepared for the questions that were on this exam. And what I like to tell people is, that is a super good sign that you're doing well. If you're getting to the thing, the, the really difficult questions, then you're probably answering all of the previous questions correctly. The CISSP exam is also super broad. It covers a wide variety of domains, access control, risk, cryptography, software development security, and much more. How do I prepare for uh, an exam such as that? Well, the Boston's XM Max for CISSP practice exams will give realistic scenario-based questions that you can practice. Although our practice exam is not adaptive, that is intentional by design. When you take the CISSP exam, it's going to be between 100 and 150 questions. And that depends on how good or how bad you do. If you're already doing rather well at the 100 question mark and the CISSP algorithm believes that there is no way that you're going to fail, then they will go ahead and pass you at 100 questions. On the other hand, if you're doing so poorly that there's no way that you can catch up, they can actually fail you at 100 questions. So a lot of times people will be taking the exam and they reach question 101 and they go, oh no, I've blown it. Don't give up. That means that you're still in the game. You're still able to pass this exam. As long as you're not cut off prematurely, you could go all the way up to 150 questions and still pass the exam. The worst thing you can do is panic at having reached question 101 and not automatically passing the exam. The most important thing is the question in front of you. Don't get distracted. Stay in the moment and focus on the question in front of you. So what do I mean by the CISSP mindset? Um, a lot of people will say that you need to think like a manager, but that's not exactly true. More importantly, you want to think as someone who wants to see the business survive. If you are responsible for making sure something happens, whether you're an IT manager or 
CEO or a CIO, CTO, uh, you want to be sure to help your company survive in whatever role that you're in. Sometimes the questions will focus on the technical. Sometimes questions focus on the managerial or business side of things. So be sure to carefully read each question and don't uh, treat each question as if it were a technical question or purely managerial question. Answer the question that's being asked of you. So how long does it take to study for the CISSP exam? Well, that depends on you and your experience level. It usually takes three to six months of consistent study for most candidates. How do you know when you're ready? Well, that's what practice exams are for. So be sure to go through our XM Max 4 CISSP practice exam to see when you're really ready. I recommend to create a study plan based on each of the eight domains. And our practice exams will allow you to take sample exams based on the domain. For example, if you want to take only questions that relate to domain one, our practice exam product will help you do that. How much does the CISSP exam cost? Well, it's rather expensive. As of the latest pricing in the U.S., it's $749. And if you fail the exam, then you'll generally have to pay that price again. That's why it's so important to have high quality training tools like Boson's Courseware and XM Max practice exams. Also, our practice exams come with our no pass, no pay guarantee. Hopefully you pass on the first try, but just in case you don't, then you can take advantage of our guarantee. So what this means is if you fail the CISSP exam, which hopefully you don't, but if for some reason you do, then our no pass, no pay guarantee will offer you a full refund of the cost of our practice exam product. How long is the CISSP valid after I've passed the exam? It's valid for three years. What happens after that three year period? ISC2 requires continuing professional education credits or CPE credits that can be fulfilled by going to IT seminars, by taking other IT certification classes and passing certification exams. In addition, you can get CPE credits for writing training materials or books related to IT. It doesn't have to be related to specifically IT security. However, it's up to ISC2 as to whether they will approve those CPEs. You're going to submit each entry individually so they will approve or deny them each instance for your credits. There's also an annual maintenance fee that a lot of people aren't aware of. And if you don't pay your annual maintenance fees, then uh, you can be decertified and prevented from taking any further ISC2 certifications until those AMFs are paid. Are there any prerequisites for taking the CISSP exam? Well, in order to hold the certification, you have to have five years of paid work experience in at least two of the eight ISC2 CISSP domains. You can waive one of those years with a four-year college degree or an approved certification. But what happens if you don't have that four or five years of work experience? You can still take the CISSP exam, but then you will become an associate of ISC2 until you gain those years of experience. Now keep in mind, once you hold the title of associate of ISC2, you can't list on your resume that you are an associate of ISC2 for the CISSP. You can't use that certification at all until you have the five years of work experience. Until then, you can only call yourself an associate of ISC2. How do I take the CISSP exam? Unlike other IT certification exams, there is no online option. You have to take this exam at a Pearson View Testing Center. And when you check in, they'll take your picture and compare it 
with their database and they will scan your the blood vessels in your hand as you enter and leave the testing environment. Because the exam is between 100 and 150 questions long, it's really important to pace yourself, but don't rush. Make sure to read each question carefully. So there's a little known rule about the CISSP exam called the run out of time rule. You've got three hours to take the CISSP exam, but what happens if the time runs out? That doesn't mean that your exam experience has ended in failure. In fact, the run out of time rule means that they are gonna compare your last number of questions to see how well you do, how well your exam correlates with what they call their confidence interval. How confident do they believe that you are going to pass? The same sort of algorithm that they use to determine if you're going to pass or fail at question 100 versus question 150. If you can answer at least 100 questions, then the run out of time rule is going to evaluate the most recent 75 questions that you have taken. And if at any time you have stayed within their confidence interval, then they will go ahead and pass you, even if you've run out of time. So does that mean that you should just go as slow as possible and make sure that you invoke that run out of time rule? I wouldn't recommend that. However, it is preferable to go slowly and carefully with these questions and answer them carefully and correctly rather than just rushing through because you've only got a few minutes left and you just want to answer as many questions as possible. Some of you uh, might remember uh, back to standardized exams that you might have taken in the past where you'll just fill in all of the bubbles answering all of the questions as C in order to try to pass, uh, but that is the wrong approach for the CISSP exam if you're running out of time. So you passed the CISSP exam. What's next? There are also other ISC2 certs that you can pursue, such as the CCSP, the SSCP, and the CSSLP. The CISSP exam is challenging. I mean, it needs to be. If it were easy, everyone would have it and it probably would not be as valuable but passing it can completely change your career. Get started with BOSUN's CISSP courseware and BOSUN's XM Max practice exams for the CISSP. Our questions mirror the exam experience and will help you learn not just technical information, but will help you understand why an answer is correct. I highly recommend studying all of those informations and finding out not just why the right answers are right, but also why the wrong answers are wrong. Be sure to check out all of our products on bosun.com. And if you ever uh, need my assistance with the CISSP or any IT career questions, you can look me up online. You can find me uh, anywhere uh, and particularly on Reddit as Bosun Michael.